Lockouts, they're everywhere. South Australia has their late night code, but Melbourne tried and binned lockouts years ago. And this year, Queensland instituted their own lockout laws statewide. This is despite massive protests over what some say is the death of the Sydney nightlife after they passed the lockout laws in 2014. We're grown adults, we know when we can go out, we know when we can go home. An estimated 20 Sydney venues have closed down and foot traffic in key areas has fallen by 20%. But a review proposes rolling back the laws to restore vibrancy and employment opportunities. And I particularly lament, with respect Minister, uh, this lockout which has taken the guts out of the nightlife of Sydney. The changes would be in the Sydney lockout zone, push the 1.30 lockout back half an hour, closing time back to 3.30, but only for genuine entertainment venues, whatever that means. And across the state, extend the 10pm limit on takeaway booze by an hour and home delivery by two hours to midnight. So, what now? Well, the government will respond in the next month, but it's clear the Premier is under pressure on the issue, with some MPs, including his deputy, wanting even looser laws. And it remains to be seen whether these changes will appease the party-goers, venue owners and just the general young folk of New South Wales. One of those young folk who really does care about the effect the lockout laws will have is Tyson Coe from Keep Sydney Open. We spoke to him earlier, as you can tell by the sunlight. Now, Tyson, what's your opinion of the review? I think it's really fantastic that uh, Mr Callanan has acknowledged that there was a problem with the legislation and therefore it needed to be pushed back. And I think it's fantastic that he's given special consideration for live music venues. However, it doesn't really go far enough 30 minutes, it's not really going to make that much of a difference, certainly not to punters and certainly not to all the people around the world who are watching what's going on in Sydney with a keen eye. Now, a recent poll out showed that three quarters of, uh, of New South Wales youth actually support the lockout laws. Um, is your group out of step, do you think? Do you still represent the, the voices of young people in this city? Well, there's a couple of issues there. Firstly, a lot of people have raised issues with how that poll was potentially conducted, about where it was conducted, because we are essentially talking about an inner city area of Sydney, not all of New South Wales where apparently the poll was conducted. Uh, and also there's a few other issues with methodology of that poll that were raised too. But we're going to take it on face value and assume that maybe only 25% of young people um, are in favour of getting rid of the lockouts and so that's why Keep Sydney Open challenged these young people to hit the streets and have a rally of their own and we gave them a month to do so. Uh, they've got until October 1 if they want to take us up on that challenge. Tyson, you're standing there in the heart of King's Cross and I'm wondering as you look around, is some of the damage of the lockout laws essentially irreparable already? Look, some of it is and some of it isn't. So Kings Cross certainly as an area was one of the world's most famous red light districts and it's definitely not going to go back to the state that it was pre-lockout. Uh, and I do acknowledge that some people think that that's a good thing, but uh, other people think that a real part of our culture and history has been lost. So that is up for debate. In terms of whether Sydney's nightlife is beyond repair, look, I wouldn't be wasting my time if I thought that it was. There's definitely things that we can do to make it better. And, you know, it can actually get a lot worse too. So I think it's really important that we get the balance right and we actually uh, do better than what the review suggests and we try and implement solutions that ensure vibrancy late at night and also safety as well. It's definitely possible. It's interesting that you talk about implementing solutions because this is essentially a review. It may not actually lead to any changes. So what was the point of it all? I mean, do you have faith that things will change? Look, there's just so many people that have suffered too much and I think the government would be very remiss to not acknowledge that. And there's been a lot of indications behind the scenes and even in public that, uh, that, that they have. So look, this is an international city. There's a lot at stake here. We've got another city that's only an hour's flight away, Melbourne, that have a late night culture that is the envy of many cities around the world. And that's what we want to strive for. The Callanan Review says that Melbourne isn't as good a comparison for Sydney as Newcastle is. And I think a lot of people are raising their eyebrows at that. Certainly keeps Sydney open is we want to be more like Melbourne, more like New York and London and Tokyo and all those other great world cities. Not Newcastle, no offence to Novocastrians, but uh, you know, we think that their city could do with a lot of improvement too. Alright, Tyson Kay, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it guys.